orientation. So the phase bow record is going to help us achieve the orientation jaw relation. And once we do this phase bow transfer, what we are seeing over here is the orientation of the maxilla with respect. Hello everyone. Welcome to another video in Prosto lecture series. In this video, let us try to understand and decode orientation jaw relation and face bow. Now as the definition goes by, it is the jaw relation when the mandible is kept in its most posterior position, the mandible can rotate in the sagittal plane around an imaginary transverse axis passing through or near both the condyles. So the definition basically tries to explain that if a line that is joining both the condyles are passed, this is an imaginary transverse axis. In this jaw relation, the mandible can rotate freely around this axis and this rotation happens in the sagittal plane. So this is the definition, but the most important thing to understand about orientation jaw relation is its objective. As the name suggests, we are trying to orient the maxilla in relation to the base of the skull. So if we understand the objective, it would be better for us to understand so in the previous slide, we understood the objective of orientation jaw relation, which is to obtain the spatial relationship of maxilla with respect to the base of the skull. So face bow is an instrument that is going to help us achieve this objective. So face bow is nothing but an instrument that is used to record the relationship of the maxillary arch to some anatomic reference point or points and then transfer this relationship to an articulator. So that would be the basic definition. Let us try to decode this definition. What it says is that there are some anatomic reference point, mostly two posterior reference point on either side and one anterior reference point. So these three reference point will help us achieve the spatial relationship of maxilla with respect to the terminal hinge axis or the base of the skull. So what you see over here is the anterior reference point used is nasion and here it is the infraorbital notch. So any posterior reference point or any anterior reference point can be used. There are different posterior and anterior reference point. Anything can be used and finally what we want to achieve is to achieve, uh, ob obtain the spatial relationship of maxilla with respect to the terminal hinge axis. So that is what phase bow is going to help us achieve. So as we all know, there are two different types of face bow. One will be the kinematic type and other will be the arbitrary type. In arbitrary type, the most commonly used one and what you're seeing in this picture is the earpiece type. And the second one will be the fascia type. The fascia type is going to come and sit somewhere just anterior to the tragus. And in the earpiece type, we have something called as a condylar rods and they are going to go and engage the ear. So this is the arbitrary type of face bow and coming to the kinematic face bow, I'll just explain the kinematic face bow in brief. In kinematic face bow, we have something called as the mandibular clutch. The mandibular clutch is going to go and engage the mandibular occlusal rim that will be somewhere over here. It engages the mandibular occlusal rim and here we have something like styli and styli will be sitting on top of a, a graph paper. Now in this what we do is we ask the patient to just open around 10 to 12 millimeters and in this 10 to 12 millimeters the condyles are in pure rotational movement. So the styli is going to record the pure rotational movement or rather the terminal hinge axis movement of the condyles and thus it is called as the kinematic face bow and any day kinematic face bow is more accurate but more cumbersome and difficult to obtain than a arbitrary face bow. So what you're seeing here is the parts of the face bow. The first one is the condylar rod. This will go and engage the patient's uh, external auditory meatus. This is the U-shaped frame with the attached orbital pointer which will serve as the anterior point of reference. This is the transfer table for the indirect face bow transfer to the articulator. This is the locking device. It has three screws. One two and three. This will be tightened in correct sequence to get the face bow record. Now this is the bite fork which is used for the dentulous patients and this is for the edentulous patients. How to differentiate it is based upon the prongs. The prongs are used for edentulous patients. 
the prongs will go and engage the occlusal rims and we don't have that provision in a dentulous bite fork. So these are the parts of the face bow and next we'll be moving on to the transfer or how to attach the face bow to the patient and transfer it to the articulator. So I have placed the bite fork inside the mouth and now I am placing the condylar rods and the U-shaped frame. The condylar rods are engaging the external auditory meatus. And now I am removing the locking device. The locking device has to engage both the U-shaped frame and the bite fork. So first I am inserting the locking device into the bite fork at one end. And at the other end, the locking device will go and engage the U-shaped frame. I am loosening all the screws. There are three screws, one, two and three. All the screws will be loosened. So at one, one end, the locking device is engaging the U-shaped frame. I am tightening that portion. Now I will be tightening all the screws, one, two and three, according to all the three planes. So I am adjusting the height of the U-shaped frame so that the orbital pointer goes and sits exactly at the infraorbital notch. So I am tightening screw number one. So that is going to lock my orbital pointer at the infraorbital notch. Next, I'm tightening screw number two. That will be to orient the midline of the face bow with the midline of the patient or the occlusal rim. And at screw number three, I'm positioning the face bow or tightening the face bow at the anterior posterior position. So I'm just rechecking and ensuring that all the screws yeah. are tight. We don't want any screws to be loose. At the end of the recording, I am verifying the position of the face bow, U-shaped frame and checking if my screws are tight. I am rechecking at screw number 2, I am verifying my midline again. This is just to ensure that the midline is perfect. I am tightening screw number 3, I am ensuring my orbital frame is correct. And yes, that's it. That's how a face bow record is made. So what you're seeing over here is how a face bow transfer is made. A face bow record is done in the patient's mouth. And what you're seeing here is the face bow transfer. So this portion is the indirect face bow transfer table. This is the cast holder. This is the locking device that we used. This is the bite registration material. And this is the maxillary cast of the patient. So this entire transfer table and this entire setup is indicating how the maxilla is oriented with respect to the terminal hinge axis or the temporomandibular joint in the patient. So the face bow record is going to help us achieve the orientation jaw relation and once we do this face bow transfer what we are seeing over here is the orientation of the maxilla with respect to the condyles in the temporomandibular joint. So this is the objective of the orientation jaw relation and this objective is achieved by a face bow record and it is transferred to the articulator using the face bow transfer. Now that's it for this video. Thank you.